Now there's also the aspect of why. Why should we be eating weeds? That's simple. Not only are they ubiquitous food that grows everywhere, they are nutritional powerhouses. Absolutely nutritionally dense. There was a study done up in Oakland in an open source where they collected weeds literally growing out of the sidewalk. And they took them to a laboratory and they cleaned them just with some water. And then they put them through mass spectrometry and chromatography and they found the nutritional density of these weeds growing even just out of sidewalks to be incredibly superior than conventionally grown produce. These weeds are nutritional powerhouses. As I mentioned, nettles is amazing, incredibly rich in nutrients and minerals as well as plant-based protein. Lots and lots of nutrition. And really, what is the point of eating food? It's not to fill a hole in our stomach. It's to give our bodies raw materials so that our bodies have all of the needs so that our bodies can function. And let's face it, in this world, we need all of the nutrition that we can get because stress depletes nutrition. Lack of sleep, lack of movement, lack of connection. So many things can compromise our health. But when we have all the raw materials for our bodies to use, that gives us a leg up. A word of awareness. Oftentimes people get really excited when they learn about there's something that they can eat and they just want to eat all of it. And then they might get sick, feel a little nauseous, might even throw up a little. And then they might think, oh, there must be something toxic about that plant. I can never eat, get, eat it again. Or maybe I have an allergy to that plant. I shouldn't eat that. And that's not necessarily the case. You see, when we're introducing a new food to ourselves, we may or may not have the enzymes to break it down. But when we eat it, we're giving our bodies the raw materials to create the enzymes. So the gist of this is when you're trying a new thing, don't eat a full pound of it all at once. Start with eating a few leaves. Chew them up really well, really get to know the flavor. And then the next day you can eat a little bit more. And that's another beautiful thing about weeds is that you can go out every day, get a feel for it, see how it moves, see how it changes as it grows. One of my mentors has a story about a family that moved from Asia to the United States and they had never had a really popular fruit. I believe it was bananas. It just wasn't common in their country. And then they fell in love with bananas and they were just buying massive amounts of bananas and eating a bunch of bananas every day. But very quickly within a day or two, they found they were getting stomach aches and feeling really nauseous and thinking maybe there's something wrong with bananas. There's nothing wrong with bananas. But if you're not used to eating a food, even something that is incredibly innocuous and ubiquitous could still make you feel sick. We've probably all done this with a new food where it's like, oh, this is so good. And you just want to eat more and more and more of it. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the food. It means we should introduce things and allow our bodies to become more accustomed, especially if we eat a very restrictive diet. We want to introduce things slowly. Now, when you have a bunch of weeds in your yard and you're not just going to eat them all at once, but they're going to, as most weeds do, they're gonna to go to flower and then to fruit and then to seed and then they're gonna die back. That's what weeds do. They take advantage of the growing season that they have. So what we can do is learn how to use them. First, how to identify them and feel 100% confident and then we want to learn how can we process them? How can we preserve them? So you can cook them. You could grind them like into a pesto. One of my favorite ways to deal with weeds is to grind the leafy weeds into pesto. Because then when I make pesto, pesto is freezable. And I often have a jar of weedy, nutritionally dense pesto in my freezer. My goal each spring is to get at least six jars of pesto into my freezer. Better yet, 12, so I can have at least one jar of pesto per month over the next year until the next weedy season. See here in Southern California, our weed season tends to be from December, January until about April. And then come April, everything starts drying out for us. 
maybe in other areas like Colorado, you're just starting to get weeds in March and April. So this is all very dependent on where you're at. Other ways that you can preserve, there's pickling, there's fermentation, there's drying. I have taken my edible weeds that are nutritional powerhouses. I've cleaned them, dried them, and then put them in a food dehydrator at low temperature and actually dried them until they were crispy. And then I powdered them and I created my own green superfood powder. There's so many different things that we can do to preserve the abundance that grows around us. I would love to hear other people's ideas because I know there is so much. I love pickling the little cheese wheels from, from Malva Neglecta, the cheese weed. And then I can use those throughout the year. Rosemary Gladstar is where I got my very first weedy recipe for pickled nettles because nettles are such a nutritional powerhouse, but we don't have any access to them in the middle of summer. Maybe you don't have any access to them in the middle of winter. That's where pickling comes in. So many different things that we can do with our edible weeds and ways that we can preserve them so that we can be increasing our nutrition and our abundance of food throughout the entire year. One of the most important things about getting to know your local plants is to have 100% positive identification. There are so many different resources for that. At Sage Country Herbs, we have a longer, more in-depth class identifying different weeds. There's many herbalists across the country that have edible weed classes. There are so many books, often organized based on location and ecosystem, where you can learn about the edible weeds in your area. Seek it out. I guarantee you are not the only one in your area that is interested in this information. Join a large community of people around the world who use weeds as food. It's not actually very weird, and it's an amazing source of nutrition that is growing for free, often right outside your door.